fan Jerry's apartment. Oh, God. Demands to be the topic, at least for a couple minutes here. Yes, and I, I'm worried because he he was in, he's in denial about the yeah. state of that place, which is scary, to say the least. I have so much footage that I don't even know if I can put out because it's so grotesque, and I don't want to come off as being just this dick who always makes yeah. fun of Fan Jerry. And also, I think the conditions are so bad in there that your channel might receive a strike. Honestly, yes. because For the dangerous or sensational content community standard yes. people could see that and people who look up to jerry uh -huh. could then say what the fuck am i cleaning my room for <laughs> roaches everybody told me those were bad my whole life mm -hmm. but they're literally falling out of jerry's ceiling right first thing that happens when you google i have cockroaches in my house is they talk about how they love burrowing into people's ears because the ear canal is heaven for fucking cockroaches <laughs> can you how could you sleep it's there it's heaven for cockroaches wow it's warm and just 98.6 degrees of gooey darkness that they love. My idea of heaven is a hot tub in Aspen, all coked up with my dick between some big fake titties. But you're telling right. me for a cockroach, yeah. it's in an ear. Yeah, and Fan Jerry's ear was probably perfect for them. Leo, we're not exaggerating about these cockroaches either. No. And I really think it's true that if cockroaches are shacking up in people's ear canals, that if we post this footage of Fan Jerry's house, we could get in trouble for YouTube. I think so. We could contribute accidentally to cockroach murder. Yes. Tell me about your night. Because Leo wanted to do a video, not unlike our Compton videos, not unlike our survival in the mm -hmm. woods videos. He wanted to spend the night in Fan Jerry's apartment. Now, what I, I wasn't there, so I need to hear about this. This is what happened. Mudflap, who's a character you'll see in, in this next, uh, the Blink-182 video that's coming out in two weeks. He is a fan of Fan Jerry's. He's been in a couple of his videos. He got me hammered at the shoot, as you as you could probably tell. He, oh, yeah. he gave me tequila shot after tequila shot. I thought it was a great idea. I was felt productive to spend the night at Fan Jerry's house. I said, you know what? This kid, there was a kid that tried to do it. He said some things about the place. There was a man who came out from New York and accused Jerry right. of two things. One was a sex offense. Right. And Jerry's been extremely sensitive about these accusations. We can't bring it up. We, we can't bring it up because we promised with our hand on a stack of Bibles, right. we would not say the words that fan Jerry is a pedophile ever again. Ever again. We wouldn't bring up the fact that he dated someone in high school and... That people spread rumors about him having sex with 16 year olds and stuff like that. We said that we would never say that again on this it's, podcast. I mean, Fan Jerry knows intellectually that they're naive at that age, right. that their bodies are tighter, mm -hmm. and that they don't have enough worldly knowledge to reject a guy like him. Exactly. So his odds are higher. So he does occasionally sleep with 18 year olds in high school yeah. and on some holiday, 16 year olds. Right. And it, especially if he's in Vegas or states that allow that kind of thing, mm -hmm. it's the. <laughs> It's the kind of thing that fan jury, it's a vice. Let's mm -hmm. call it what it is. It's probably a vice. Yeah, and, absolutely. And it is what it is. But we promised we wouldn't bring it up anymore on the pod. So, And, and then also on March 23rd, which was the day he lost his virginity uh -huh. in upstate New York when he was 14 years old, mm -hmm. uh, he on that one day allows himself to have sex with 14 year olds as an mm -hmm. ode to his younger self. Okay. And you see I what think, I'm saying? Yeah, of sell, Because he fucked a 14 year old on that day. Right. And he, he, can, he knows how to fuck with VPNs, so it actually he, it makes it seem like he's in Germany, where apparently the age of consent is 14. So Yeah, he's, his calibration skills... Oh, it, they're, they're strong. He learned them in the war. <laughs> but they work for the, the VPNs. They work right. for throwing off an agency as strong as the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Exactly. Jerry is going to be none too pleased <laughs> about this tangent we've gone <laughs> None of this is true. None man. of it is true, guys. We're messing around, but... It just, his, he gets so mad yeah, about it. It just obviously... We gotta bring it up. Yeah, it's, it's a big, juicy worm getting dangled in a sparrow's dreams. It's the best. That's what it is to us. Yes. But and his place... The thing that he also got accused of by that man from upstate New York uh -huh. who tried to come out and move in with Jerry was of having a filthy place quote with shit stacked from the floor to the ceiling mm -hmm. with cockroaches unlivable conditions mm -hmm. that's what he said was there that's what he said was there now i'm not going to say that this guy wasn't exaggerating embellishing but when we got there 
There when was, you got there. When I got there. Because I came later, but yeah. you tried to spend the night. I tried to spend the night. Which so, is unspeakable. I don't know why I thought I, I I could. You know, the first thing that happened within the first, like, I don't know, 20 minutes, he was bumbling around. He was a little high, a little drunk, and he um, we he needed to record himself with Ian, who came by to record his vocals. I see a little creepy. For the Blink-182 song. Yeah, for the Blink-182 Blink song. Over to the right, I, I'm looking down. I'm playing with his dog, and I see... A creepy crawly. Ooh, your first cockroach. Yeah, first of the night. Mm. And I go, fuck, Fan Jerry, look, what the fuck is that? He casually looks at it and goes, ah, oh, that's nothing. Grabs a bottle of Raid, proceeds to go over there and smoke it. Now, did he, he, though, did he even clean up the carcass? No, Leo? he left the carcass on the ground. It, it disappears into the into the carpet that was the exact color of cockroach. Okay, that's how it works. Right. I think that's what he does. He just lets it go. In there. And his excuse for them being up on the walls was what? He said it to you. That he just got his carpets cleaned. Right. And therefore, they all went north. Right. Or up. <laughs> and... Like they're migratory is, birds. Hey Austin, you're laughing, but this happened, man. And, and I'm going to tell you this. I came in the next morning and I saw no less than 20 cockroaches. Right. They came out. Thank God yeah. for the main channel video, the Blink-182 video. I smoked probably 18 of those 20 with the raid. Yep. They all fell to the floor. Fan Jerry didn't come out doot, 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 with a dustpan nope. and a roll of paper towels and get him up. His carpet is a mass grave for insects. Yes, it's it's absolutely disgusting. His dog is really happy, though. I can say that. All his animals seem like they're in good shape. Like they're not being abused sexually. The, exactly, which was I was, I was worried about we that. We all know the look in a sexually abused dog's eye. And Riley hasn't had a finger up her ass, as far as we know. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I've told the story before about when I laid on top of my dog in mm. fourth grade. And then mm. when I got my penis licked by the dachshund with That's peanut fine. butter on the tip in mm -hmm. fifth grade, those dogs were still happy, too. So mm -hmm. I'm not saying you can't do any kind of sex stuff with a dog and it still be happy. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying when you start penetrating it yeah. more than a couple times a month, the dog's going to look real sad. I think so. A couple and, times a month. That's all we're at. Just don't go above a couple times a month. A Ask times. Nico. He's a trainer. It, Nico probably, this is one of the things he talks about with his, uh, you know, the people he walks his, the dogs for. He's also not a fucking trainer. Can we talk? Nico's a goddamn dog walker, but that's another story. Anyway, the creepy crawly, first one of the night. There proceeded to be about three, four or more. I got most of them on camera. After a while, I was like, I just can't, I can't keep filming like cockroaches. This is fucked up. <laughs> anyway, he showed me where he does his work. So he proceeded to like basically tell me why each area of his apartment was in the state that it was in. He's like, okay, everything is in the kitchen right now because they clean the carpets. He said his work area, you know, where he games and works was dirty because he moved everything there because they cleaned the carpets. It's so everything was about the cleaning of the carpets made everything so dis in to be in disarray. Yeah, it's here. Here's how I would describe it, because you're saying it's in disarray, but yeah. you're leaving a lot to the imagination. Yeah. Imagine a camp in the <laughs> Wild West, say Montana, say Wyoming, that's been snowed in. There's a guy's tent. There's a hole that he shits in, and then there's a pond that he retrieves fresh water from. Yeah. And during the height of the snow, all there is is a trench from the tent to the hole to the pond. Mm -hmm. In Jerry's house, <laughs> the shit is stacked so high and is so ubiquitous, you can only go from the bed to the bathroom. The shitter. Yeah. There isn't even a third place you can go. You Bro. can't go in the kitchen. Bro. Can you go in the kitchen, Leo? No, that you could not actually go in the kitchen. I asked him for water. He said, I don't have any water. I said, okay. It is a knee high layer of debris that is all over his kitchen, all over his living room and restricts your movement between bed and bath. Yeah. So is it much worse than it was in the original video that you oh, went to Oh, yeah. House? That is a resounding capital yes. Mm -hmm. Man. With an exclamation point. It's, he can't, I don't think he can bring a, a female into that apartment. You think, Leo? Well, the good news, not to pick on Jerry here. I mean, we've all had sex with questionable women. But the last girl I know confirmed he was fucking was like uh, the sister of a meth head or something. So she might actually be used to those circumstances. Yeah. She might even feel at home. At home, at home, man. Like, uh, like a yuppie girl in SF might want some nice thread count sheets, a candle, clean bathroom. This girl probably wants cockroaches and shit in the kitchen. Right. Meth heads. Right. But yeah, look, point of the, I couldn't, I couldn't stay there that night. I ended up walking to a Motel 6. It was that bad. 
But the video he should bailed. be pretty funny. He I, bailed failed. On I failed. Video. I bailed on a video. I couldn't do the 24 hour challenge in, in Fan Jerry's. I wasn't going to be able to be productive the next day. I had to film yep. a lot. All I'm sa- all we I got to say is that we, yeah, we need to get we need to do another intervention for Fan Jerry. There's definitely more to be done to fix what's going on. I think we could get a really high budget one going on if we just call that channel that does hoarders. We should. They'll come. Yeah. We It'll be to, great. Yeah, we need to do that. That'd be great. He and he had he he kind of what why does he have all the excuses? I feel like at some point he's got to be like, okay, yes, this place is a shithole. He won't say he says he likes it there. <laughs> he, does. he loves it. He waves at the neighbors. He's like, Juan, DeAndre. I, I'm sorry that it's. You think you just got a little racist? There, I got huh? a little racist, but it, it it's you uh, know, Juan and DeAndre. Yeah, that was fucked up. I don't know why I said that. Well, because who else is there, Leo? <sighs> there Caesar. Might be, there, there's also there's a. Li- a, a Ling Lu downstairs for sure. Asians will not tolerate those sorts of conditions. No. Ling Lu sounds like a cross between a Chinese woman I saw and, an a, Asian and a woman there. It was an Asian, Grinch. but you know those Asians that like are smoking cigarettes with in front of all the kids? You know, the, she was one of those. The ones with massive gambling debts. Exactly. I understand. She was one of though. those Asians. So Jerry is in that place. He did, though. You said that he won't acknowledge it. In the Blink-182 video, we did, it's all the small things is a song we use. Mm. In the Beatles video, we did Little Help for My Friends or whatever. This time we used all the small things. And one of his lyrics that he delivered powerfully was, I live alone in a shithole surrounded by dumb animals. <laughs> na, 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 na. And, he, and he did sing that with a lot oh, of passion. Oh, God, he was great. From was, his shitty kitchen yeah. while holding his stupid animals. And it was so, unbelievable. I mean, he's got a sense of humor about the place. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, he's acknowledging it a little bit. But we just... Yeah. We had to let you know, you guys will be able to see through Leo's channel, through mm. mine, the extent of this place. I mean... He makes Austin look like he's living in a Tribeca penthouse. Yes. And we've all seen Austin shit fuck trailer. It's not good. <laughs> it's not good. I, I will say this. I think um, the the best thing that Fangeri could do uh, to really, really help his case here is get a, a gallon of gasoline and douse that apartment with it and throw a fucking match in there and start the fuck over well okay for humanity's sake mm-hmm. i think that is the best approach mm-hmm. because humanity would be better off if the hitching post motel vanished <laughs> from the face of the earth yeah but in jerry's personal case i don't think getting hit with an arson charge right now is the right move mm-hmm. i think fan jerry when you factor in the overweightness and the alimony and the drama with the baby mama mm-hmm. if you throw in a felony arson charge he's gonna take his own life god he i've always forget that about fan jerry i hope that he's realized that the fact that he's alive is a gift and he should take take you know think every day is beautiful fan jerry no matter what um but yeah he would it would be bad probably good for humanity bad for fan jerry what he needs to do is he needs to get up and he needs to get out of there he needs to get out of there man we might have to help him like and and maybe sign for his he'll pay the he's gonna pay the fucking rent i doubt that he'll not pay the rent on right i mean we could probably sign we could co-sign for an apartment because he could afford 1200 somewhere apartments everywhere all over socal are like really cheap right now because everyone's leaving I don't know. I think I would have a really hard time uh, fronting the money for anybody in the cruise apartment. But I think Fan Jerry might be the number one guy to go AWOL and stop paying you. You think so? Wouldn't trust in Lanigi. Mm -hmm. Probably wouldn't trust us. Leo, I don't know. Really? You could have some shit with a chick and snap and move to the middle of the country and start a family. Like God knows what could go on with you. God damn it. I could do that. Your midlife crisis could see you disappear to Greece where it's legal just to lay out with your cock in the sun. Dude, you're absolutely right. Fuck teenagers. How'd you know I like to sun my cock? I love sunning my cock. Guys, it increases testosterone. Definitely try to get some sun on your cock. Sunning your cock is great. I was doing it in the apartment until now. My roommate's there all the time, but before that. The 19-year-old? Yeah, the Uh 19-year-old. Um he blows me. I'm just kidding. Um, the sunning of the same, cock. The same logic Fan Jerry uses to chase women. Dude, everybody's fucking. I'm doing. Dude, I haven't been able to do one video without doing a gay joke in so long now. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's tough. I don't it's, know what it, it is. It's it's so easy to fall back on. Why? What it was is. the last offense you had? Well, it was in your video in Cleveland. Uh-huh. I'm pretty sure I did something gay in Cleveland. Oh, okay. 
obviously my two videos that we filmed on the East Lots Coast are chock full of homosexuality. Uh -huh. But I'm talking about the Blink-182 video we just shot or your own okay. channel videos or your roommate. My own, my own channel, yeah. On uh, My roommate, we did a, a quick little video and for some reason, somebody brought up that I should go around asking to suck bum dick. And I did a, a, I did a little bit. Wait, 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 wait. You went around asking who to suck a bum dick. Well, it was like they were warning people that there was a big guy wearing a leopard coat that was trying to <laughs> blow bums. Okay. That's pretty fun. Yeah. And then right after, <laughs> and then right after they warned them, I would come around and I'd be like, hey. <laughs> I, that's actually fucking. I guess that shows how sophisticated my sense of humor is. No, I think that's pretty funny. Uh, and then I would come around after and be like, hey, anybody know where that fresh bum dick is? <laughs> So, <laughs> to like a table full of yuppies. Yeah, exactly. A bunch of hot Echo 26 Park. year old girls eating a $35 salad. Yeah. So, uh, so then again, once again, I've never been able to, after the San Francisco video, there, these rumors have been swirling about our sexuality and I haven't been able to dispel them. I can't tell anybody like, look, I'm not dude. And the next video, there's something gay again. There was a cock lynching literally last, okay, a few days ago, we had a cock lynching here in the, in the room. What is it? Oh, I get what you're saying. That's okay. What happened with Iggy, him wrapping his dick around my neck? That was pretty good. It gay. didn't even fully eclipse my trachea, by the way. It was only on one side. He didn't do what I had in mind, what I wanted really badly. <laughs> you can't just say cock lynching and expect us to know what that means. That's what everyone was calling it. A cock, is that something? Will you kill a gay guy as a hate crime? Is it a cock lynching? Well, when you, when you, you, you told Iggy to hang you with his cock. And oh, okay. A hanging and a lynching, I mean, they're synonymous. Oh, so yeah. Well, I just yeah. didn't. I didn't have any racial. Yeah, it yeah. was racist. It was racist. I just, I just blacked <laughs> out in right sexual awesome. ecstasy when that happened, so I don't remember what I said or didn't say. But Leo, Ian said this, and I totally agree, that you in that San Francisco video, you were great as the pirate. You were even better as the gay, big yeah. Brazilian lover. Mm -hmm. That is some of, I don't care who hates on that because it was gay or fucking lame that we were making out. Mm -hmm. Anybody who hates on your performance in that bit or that bit, period. Uh, the suicide jokes. Unreal. And, and you're just big, cuddly, massive, Brazilian homosexual top alter ego yeah. can suck my dick. Seriously. They can suck my suck dick. Suck Danny's dick. You fucking jerk off. And also, anybody who hates on you and your leopard coat trying to blow a local vagrant can similarly <laughs> pleasure me orally. <laughs> Hey, man, listen, there's going to be some more gay jokes coming your way, kids. Yeah, I'm sorry, but they're funny. All right. Eric Andre, he made out with a cop. You ever see that? Yeah, I think so. Unbelievable. Yeah. The cop b busts into a coffee shop, busts him, puts him up against the fucking uh, the display case, yeah. handcuffs him, immediately start making out. Yeah. And like hard, like yeah. with the ass grabs. Uh -huh. uh, that now that is fucking gnarly. Yeah, that's no, great. <laughs> and um, I, I've oft fantasized about being the cop in that fairy tale. <laughs> I just wanted to use the word oft. Yeah, man, it's it's tough. Those jokes are always available. The dick jokes, the fraternity yeah. humor. And it's fun. It's got a place. It's got a it's, place. It's um, yeah. other kinds of humor. That's something I'm working on. Getting yeah. getting better at that, studying, working hard all the time. It's difficult. And, we, and, and that's something that uh, we, we have a lot of time to do it, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just like... I mean, I don't know. It's dick jokes. It's like breaking the glass and grabbing the fire extinguisher. Okay. I mean, I'm That's fucking, right, baby. If shit's going bad, if there's a blaze in my living room, I'm breaking the glass. Boom. If we're doing an interview with an 85-year-old volunteer docent mm -hmm. and it's getting boring, we're going to talk about our cameraman being a pedophile. <laughs> now, that, I mean, that was premeditated. I bought a shirt. That was I, actually, so good. Let me rephrase that. I got a shirt custom made. Sydney couldn't he couldn't even comment on it. He didn't he want to comment. I just saw um I just saw the comment that Kyle from Nelk left on that picture mm -hmm. I put on my Instagram. Oh, that's amazing, like dude. they're like, ah, funny how cameramen always turn out to be sex offenders. <laughs> referring to <laughs> of course Nino. I just saw that today. It gave me a little chuckle. That's funny, yeah. That's great. Well, why don't I'm gonna piss again because apparently I have a serious prostate problem. Mm -hmm. We're going to get an NFL veteran on the phone. Nine year NFL veteran, guys, just for you guys. Nine year NFL veteran. I'm excited to talk about this guy because anybody who's been around me in the past two years knows I got football fever. Yeah, he's really become a football head the last couple of years. And you might also recall if you've been around me in the past, actually, 
seven years mm. that I have been a diehard Tampa Bay fan since 2014. Holy shit, you, you can have. Go back on my Instagram, my Facebook. I made a YouTube video about it in 2018. Mm -hmm. I chose Tampa Bay in 2014 mm -hmm. as my team because they were then the shittiest team in the league. Wow. I recently disavowed them in favor of Cleveland, or excuse me, Cincinnati, but I take that back because, mm -hmm. or I can root for both teams. That's what I'm trying to say. root for both teams. And therefore, I got quite a rush yesterday watching Tom Brady, mm -hmm. 43 years old, supposedly washed up, supposedly done, beat the heavily favored Saints mm -hmm. in their second game in the playoffs. Yep. And do you think now that your boy Mahomes went down? Got a concussion. I don't think he's going to be able to play next week. You know who else is going to get a concussion soon? You and the Fight Club video we're filming in two weeks. If I fight Dillashaw, I will have the defense of Muhammad Ali. You guys, we got a Fight Club video coming up. TJ Dillashaw, ex-UFC champs in on it. We need mouth guards then, too. We can't have shitty fucking big five mouth guards. Yes, we can. Why? What if I lose a tooth? Do you think this is the H3H3 podcast? Do you think my main channel is Logan Paul? I don't have the budget to get us real dentally approved Fuck. guards. Is that what they do? Like how well, the mouth guards that you use in like a fight, they have to be, you have to go to a dentist? You're going to go to Big Five, and you're going to be happy with whatever I buy you for four ninety nine. I'll fucking you're, go to... I'm going go, to get my bite. own mouth guard, all right? I'm not losing a tooth. I don't have dental insurance. Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to leave a boil and bite mouth guard in the sun the for five what? minutes. It's going to get a little warm, and you're going to put it in your mouth and bite and hope for the best. What the fuck is wrong with I'll you? I'll give you 10 seconds in the microwave, and then you put the mouth guard in, and you fight. Fucking God damn it! I don't have health insurance. Get your sugar uh, mama. Hey. Start paying. Can we take that out, please? Sell your... Well, can we mark that time? That's You can't say her name? No, dude. What's anybody going to do with her name? I don't know. They'll find her. They're creepy. That sure. bitch, they might tell her husband. I don't know. Sure. Leo uh, asked that the please. name of his sugar mama be redacted. Austin, is that all right? Can we... Thank you. You're going to sell stocks. Oh, Jesus take that out <laughs> Christ. <laughs> take that out, too. Yeah, you take that out. God just, damn it. Yeah, the, the, kids, the kids do. I, the fucking kids are crazy on this fucking pod, man. They'll, they'll fucking abuse me for weeks. We're fighting, though, is the bottom line. Like, for God's sakes, you know, even fucking uh, Miguel said that he was going to extort us in San... Uh, he said this, I'm going to extort you. I think, I don't even know if that's the right word. And t and kidnap you and take you to Mexico. You and Danny told us that. He said that. Miguel, from the Compton video. Yes. The guy who we think is probably a raging meth head. You're just telling me this now? I'm sorry. I didn't want to. You know, you, you have to keep the energy up, Danny. Wait, wait, wait. I'm wait, wait, sorry. Wait. He said in a non-joking fashion that he's going to take us to Mexico as hostages. Yes. Can I please see that message so sure. I know whether or not to uh, cock my gun I next mean, to my bed instead of just sleeping with it? He needs to know that, yeah, we have, you know, guns. I Dude. do know that Noel posted a bunch of like yeah, anti-Danny really stuff but then he messaged a fan saying that he was hacked by one of his friends and which is, it wasn't actually him that posted it's funny that because stuff. the stuff that what the fuck let's see this message I'm gonna read it aloud to I the don't audience. know what's happening right now but this is the weirdest tell thing me what you, I've ever tell seen tell me what you're seeing this is the weirdest I have to screenshot this I <laughs> wait let me see it I'll describe it look at the top of the name on, on Miguel's top right now what the fuck is going on that is very strange <laughs> Miguel's Instagram. What? It says Dave Navarro at the top with a blue check. With mark. a blue check. What? Okay, that's strange, but that's just a glitch. That was probably it's because a glitch, yeah. I this is what happened. Leo was masturbating to Dave Navarro's no, it photos. Wasn't. And he spent over three hours on the page, so there's some sort of glitch. And <sighs> it just it's glitch. It's like when you leave a TV on pause too long and the image becomes superimposed. Dave Navarro screen. was a ladies' man. He's one of the top ladies' men of all of the rocker world, so I did like him. Okay. So, so that he says, I'm like, okay, here's uh, this is actually a cause for concern. First of all, Miguel is, he it was on the soybean joke. Yeah. He sent Leo a bunch of hashtag soybeans and nuts, nuts. posts. Yeah. And then Leo said, love it, bro. LOL. Then on Tuesday, <laughs> Miguel says, you in San Diego, I'm going to kidnap you and Danny Mullen, full name. So there's no mistaking it's me and extort you guys. In Mexico, yeah, extort us. Ex I extortion, execute. I think is what he was. Yeah, but know, I mean, either. but extort means he's just gonna be like, oh, no, no, give me, no, give me some money, or you're like, you can't get a ride back. No, give me some more money, right? Which doesn't sound all that menacing, I, right? I think execution would be a lot scarier. Yeah, it would. Um, 
So Leah says, WTF, bro? Do I got to send that to the cops? What's wrong with you, bro? You good, bro? Question mark. Yo. And uh, no response no has response. been given. Okay. Well, let's not uh, go back down to Compton anytime soon. Yeah. What do you think about that, Austin? God damn, Miguel. Why'd he turn on us? We put him on the map. I he don't know. Our- I feel like I've always wanted them to... To be our correspondents from Compton. Everyone liked them. We wanted them. Steve, a lot of people said that we should give him a chance. We should give Miguel a chance to give him a job. And we did. We gave him a job. We did give him a chance. We, we gave him a chance. We didn't, we didn't give him a job. We didn't give him a job. But it, they, they could have turned into a job. What if the Compton, checking in with Compton bit became so popular that eventually when the podcast blows up and it will, we had to give him a little piece of the pie. You know, 1% <laughs> for life, for life. I'm sure that would be invested responsibly. <laughs> I'm sure that wouldn't to be spent immediately. I don't know. Cheap hookers and Coke. Oh, man. You would hope that they're going to get cleaned up. I hope I pray for those two men. I hope that they find God even more because I think nasty, nasty, nasty nigga. Noel, he is definitely into God, but Miguel, not so much. That might be one of the supreme ironies of life is that every murderous, cold-blooded thug from South Central is also a hardcore Christian. A lot of how the time they seem to be. Yeah. How does that work? When you're doing drive-bys out the window with your right hand and you got the good book tucked under your left pectoral muscle. I don't know, man. What I don't know what they're thinking. I guess it's if they repent, you know, like God forgives all, I guess. If you truly, truly believe in him one day you know he will forgive you but not really but they're probably going to hell yeah but it's not like the pedophile or the serial killer who repents on his deathbed whenever you find a real thug on instagram or facebook god first is always the number one thing in his bio it seems like it man it's really it, it is terrible they need to figure that out i don't know what god needs to help come on man do something you got any theories us. on this austin mr jesus freak i was just thinking of how i could invest into making some sort of gangster church where all the gangsters go together to worship God. <laughs> and then we lock the doors and throw a Molotov through the window. Yeah, I think it's a good plan. Jesus. Lead. Austin, too, you're not the best example of Christianity. I don't know how God would feel about you drinking piss in the mountains, you raw-dogging pill addict chicks, you doing... What else has Austin done that's unspeakable? I mean, he mutilates cats. He I forgot about the cat mutilation. Yeah, dude, that is that place up there, dude. The, all the all the, the animals go to die at the, his place up there that we we go visit in the mountains. My that cat did die. His cat died, dude. And he, they How blamed it. At, they blamed it on a coyote, dude. But come on. Yeah, no, yeah, I told you on the podcast one time. My cat Leo got eaten by a coyote. His name was Leo, too. You know who I think did it. I don't know who you're pointing at right now, but look at Dino. It's tell Dino. me he isn't a guy who tortures animals. Oh, God, he is. But the first thing he does is put his cock right up its ass before he fucking mutilates. Well, that's the beginning I, I think, of the mutilation. I think it might be a smarter idea to mutilate and then fuck the cat because cats have claws and it's not an animal you want fighting back yeah. with your exposed penis out. I can't talk too much shit on Dino for absolutely killing the family cat. Because when I was younger, <laughs> I, uh, well, I've already confessed to getting oral from a five-year-old dachshund. Yeah. That was pedophilia and bestiality. Holy shit. Mm-hmm. And that dachshund did leave, live to be 17 years old. So it lived a good life. So if I were to take it to Nevada, at least the pedophilia part of the equation would have been gone. Then you got dog ears. It's complicated. When you were walking by. It's complicated. When you were walking by the dachshund for years, you know, maybe 10 years later, we ever just look at it and, you know, is it kind of like seeing a girl that you hooked up with down in, <laughs> like, in the street? Or what? Yeah, no, it's more because for a lot of years, <laughs> it's before dachshund oral and yeah. after dachshund oral. That's how I measure my life. <laughs> and before I got blown by the dog, it was like when you used to work as a copy salesman, yeah. copier salesman, mm-hmm. and you would occasionally, I'm talking once every six months, go to HR mm-hmm. and there would be that chick sitting behind the counter who had sort of a long torso and uh, a bunch of nipples Mm. and big ears and you'd be like i wouldn't mind getting oral from that girl right and the difference between me and you is i made it a reality (laughs) was it crunchy or smooth peanut butter i knew that jamie my dachshund preferred crunchy Mm. so i sacrificed my own pleasure it was selfless and I used Here, the nutty Skippy. <laughs> you son of a bitch. Do you like smooth peanut butter? 
I personally like crunchy too, Me but too, yeah. when you're getting oral and the only lubricant you have is made by Jif, yeah. it's a good idea to not have peanut shards in there. Yeah. But I had to do it for her. It was for her at the end of the day. Oh my God. I remember the, it, it, just a random peanut butter story. A girl that, uh, that I went to college with, and I actually didn't do this sex act, but she said that a guy, um, she a guy really wanted to hook up with her and she was bored and didn't really want to hook up with them but she said if you grab that peanut butter jar over there and jerk off with the peanut butter you can come in my mouth and apparently the guy did it would you have done that of course nice that wouldn't be the first time i've had sex with a jar of peanut butter <laughs> you've done it <laughs> fuck you've done no. it did you fuck a jar of peanut butter austin no, but honestly, probably not a bad idea. It's and I'm sure feel some pretty people good. at home are probably going after this video. The first thing they're going to be doing is opening their mother's pantry, yeah. cracking open a can of peanut butter and yeah. throw it that away. On just cot. throw it away, guys. If you do that, you know, foremost among them is going to be Dino, who just, you know. by the way, did the little hand on the chin thing like yeah. you do when you're just about to solve a long division problem. Dino, mm. Dino, <laughs> that is a good thing to fuck. Oh, by the way, I was going to confess, though, Leo, yeah. I'm sorry to in addition to having a sexual oh, encounter yeah. with two of my family dogs. I Wait, did what, two. Yeah. I laid on top of the Labrador, no, no penetration, right, right. just dry humping. I did at one point collect a bunch of earthworms. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. I did. At How one many point on a cold rainy February afternoon when so many earthworms were forced from their homes they get flooded down there. Of really. course. It's of like course. Katrina, but instead right. of black people, it's earthworms. It's earthworms, right. I made for them a paper ship. I was Noah. I made a paper ship and I put it in my pool that we had in our backyard, 20 worms and all, and I set the paper arc ablaze. <laughs> did you really? Yeah. Holy shit. Did they, did they squirm out of there? They basically, I mean, the, their ship they were on was on fire yeah. and eventually a flaming origami boat <laughs> doesn't it's serve just, its intended function it's, of floating. It's kind of fucked up, but not. I don't know. I, I've hooked it. I've gotten worms and put them on a fucking hook and threw them into the ocean. That's true. See, to be eaten. That's true. By sharks, basically. You know, it's fucked up. To them, they're sharks. Yeah, exactly. To them, they're blue whales. They're blue whales. Even the most modest of minnow. Yeah, it, it was... Um, I killed these worms. It was, 20? it was 20 worms are dead. How did you make the and, ship? Who made the ship for you? Uh, it was me and it was a really shitty job. Uh -huh. I mean, it only needed to stay afloat for like five seconds before fire engulfed the so craft. So you, you put it on there with all the worms and then yeah. you just. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then they just all sunk to the bottom. And I, I did that. But yeah, I guess it is a lot worse than using worms as bait. Absolutely. Because that the end goal is to feed yourself. And I'm right. sure, I mean, Jesus, he, he fucking, he fed people fish yeah. and. And he fished for fish, and I'm right. sure he used worms. But I just took their lives for my own pleasure, and that's something I've wanted to get off <sighs> well, my chest. Well, thank God, for. because I thought you were you were you were gonna. Did anybody else think that he was gonna say he fucked the worms? <laughs> I thought he was. Yeah, gonna I, fuck the everybody worms. thought that that was what you were gonna say. So thank God you burned them and said, "I did the I did the fucking magnifying glass with the ants." You ever do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, you can kill insects, even arachnids, like Fan yeah. Jerry does, and it's okay. But yeah, I I didn't, and I see where you guys saw. Yeah. You probably thought I was going with that. I did yeah. not like fill a film canister with worms and put it on my ass. <laughs> Missed oh opportunity. My God. Yeah, I guess so. I'm going to pee real yeah, quick. Pee. But uh, yeah, we're getting this fucking NFL player on the phone. Yes, we are. Clay Harbor. And uh, I'm excited to ask him some NFL related questions. We're going to ask him about some locker room shenanigans. Oh, yeah. I know uh, Leo and I cannot stay away from the gay. Yeah, so we're, gonna do we're going to have to ask for some, you know, maybe some measurements, certain things. And I'm going to pee, and then we're going to do it. All right. What up? What up? My man, Clay. It's Leo, brother. How are you, man? I'm good, man. How are you? It's been a while. It's been a while, brother. It's been a while. Yeah, you're on the Leo and Danny show. Uh, you know, I've been doing this uh, comedy podcast for like a year now, and I've been always telling my buddy he's a big football fan, my co-host here, and he <laughs> he's excited to, to talk to you, man, because he's a huge fan of the game but also of you know quarterbacks and specifically you've you've played with some of the top guys man. whoa 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 clay i'm sorry we we planned ahead of time that we were eventually going to steer the conversation toward 
Drew Brees and Tom Brady's penis. Leo is just taking the reins. And <laughs> God for that. Heart. But but Clay, I want. First of all, I really respect it. Nine year career in the NFL as a tight end. But I want to hear more about how you met Leo. It was on the reality show The Bachelor. Yes. That's a part of Leo's life that our audience doesn't get to hear a lot about. So you got to tell me about the experience, about the camaraderie you felt with Leo. We about, spent a lot. Of, we spent a lot of time together. Me and Clay were boys, man. Yeah, that's yeah. A, that's what I was yeah. here. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, man. No, but so we met him a bachelor and um from uh from from day one there, uh me and me and Leo hit it off and uh I don't know, we're just two big dudes talked mm-hmm. about lifting weights and, and you know, and uh, talking to girls and, and stuff oh, yeah. like that. Uh, and, and, uh, <laughs> it's good to know you guys aren't complete meatheads. Clay, <laughs> did you did you actually want to bang the girl who was the, the contestant? What was her name? It was Becca at the time. Yeah, I think Becca. She, yeah, Becca. Did you Clay no, Becca did, was a very Uh-huh? girl she was easy to talk to mm-hmm. and um yeah I, th- I thought she was i thought she was attractive man the whole bachelor thing's weird though because like if you win you got to be okay with like your two other buddies going to the fantasy suite with like the girl you're proposing to the next day oh, yeah. yeah so to me that's that's a little weird like yeah. your fiance was just with your one of your good friends the day before yeah, yeah. you get to know yeah. everybody so i mean look i spent more time with clay than I have probably a lot of my friends. It was every single day, 10 hours a day for like five weeks. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? It was like an intense thing. So yeah, me and Clay got to know each other really well. A lot of nights, we stay up really late at night, joking around. Okay, oh yeah, way to not make this sound gay at all. Just We got to know each other. We stayed up late, long nights. (laughs) Well, uh, we got to know each other intellectually, (laughs) physically. Yeah, man, there was a little bit of that. There's nothing to do there, man. There's nothing to do. There's no phone, there's no TV, there's no radio. All you have to do to keep you entertained and insane and just talk and share war stories with people. And, um, <laughs> okay, that's good. You know, that's, uh, going Leo direction. being an ex athlete at, uh, yeah. Cal and, yeah. um, you went to Cal. Leo, Leo went to Burkwell. Oh, okay. That's that, that's not Cal. It counts. In that case, there it, are like 13 Cal. Cal's in it's California. Cal. Um, but did yeah, Leo, yeah, wait, 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 Clay, did Leo, did Leo lie to you and tell you he was a golden bear? He did not go to Berkeley. I didn't say Berkeley. He, he knows I went to Cal State. I don't know. If I'm, I'm, dude, it, that, that was like three years ago. Yeah, and you know, UCLA, I'm too. I from playing, in the fo- in, playing football for so long. So, yeah. You know, my memory is not, uh, is not to be trusted. But, Clay, to back up a little bit, so you think it's strange that... I mean, right now we're in the playoffs in the NFL. So on The Bachelor, the playoffs, all the guys who made them got to spend the night with Becca. Yeah. So it works. Yeah. it's like the final four is all spending the night and probably at least half those guys are she, banging her. Well, she gets to pick of the final four. Like, I think Becca banged probably two of them, right? She banged the guy that she was with for a while. And, yeah. then, and Blake, Blake. Yeah. And, oh, Blake, yeah. of course. Yeah. The good old Blake. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Some, some will pick all three. You get to choose three to go to the fancy suite. I know the last girl, it was highly publicized how she, uh, you know, she hooked up with uh, with everybody or pilot, <laughs> like three Say all times press is good press. Or something. Yeah. So so yeah, they get to pick man three three guys go into the fantasy suite where there's no cameras and mm-hmm. you know they play with everything you need and that's pretty weird for me because yeah. if you're thinking about proposing to a girl the next day, you wouldn't want to think about her being with your friend, but that's the name of the game. Yeah. yeah. Who needs that shit, man? You and Leo had each other for physical comfort. Oh, Cl- you <laughs> son of a <laughs> bitch. Yeah. I'm sensing. He's a big bear. Like, cool. there's not a lot of guys bigger than me. And Clay was, he made me feel small. It was nice. You Clay, know? so you played tight end in the NFL. <laughs> yes, sir. Which teams did you play for? Um, I think all of them actually. No, Dude, he played I, uh, for so many. I played four years for the Eagles. I played three years for the Jags. I played half a year for the Lions, half a year for the Patriots, half a year for the Lions, and a year with the Saints. Damn. And you played nine years, which is incredible. The average career for a tight end, your position, you're out blocking people. You're receiving passes in the middle of the field, getting smoked by a couple defensive backs. How long do those guys usually last? Three years? Yeah, it's like three to four years is the average career. And, um, you know, I, I lasted longer than most. I was one of my career to go a little bit longer into the double digits. But uh, a couple of injuries kind of slowed me down there at the end. But, uh, you know, one of, the, one of the funnest times of my life, something I strive for. And, uh, you know, I don't regret playing ball at all. At, at, at all. As you shouldn't, man. One thing I'm curious about, Clay, and one of the reasons I love football so much is the mental component. 
For example, this year I was fascinated by the psychology of a guy like Baker Mayfield, who if the team isn't playing well, the roster is too good to keep him around. This year was do or die for him and he ended up playing well. They got to the playoffs. Mitch Trubisky, a guy who was a number one draft pick, I believe, and who has been sucking so bad they brought in Nick Foles to put pressure on him. A guy like Carson Wentz, who completely melts down. Or, on a more positive side of things, a guy like Aaron Rodgers, where they bring in Jordan Love and they're not drafting him any receivers as weapons. And statistics show his career has been on the downhill. But then... I guess he started reading. He started meditating. He's MVP this year. He's in the conference championships. I love that. And I wanted to ask you, a guy who actually played football, how did you deal with the tremendous mental stress of always knowing there was somebody younger, somebody faster on the sidelines or in college about to be drafted to your team who was fighting for your place? Yeah, that was always uh, that was always interesting, man. It, it, it's tough because you know it's such a uh, it, it's such a tough uh, t- tough industry. It's so competitive, and that's inter- interesting about Rodgers. I didn't know that he was. Uh, he said he started reading and meditating more. Yeah, man, because it seemed like they were just trying to get rid of him. Like the regime in Green Bay thought he's declining every year slightly. Still good, just not elite anymore. Instead of getting him a tight end or a new running back or another receiver to compliment Devontae Adams, we're just drafting another quarterback. So that a lot of people saw that as a sign of ultimate treachery by the Green Bay Packers. And I guess he just he had to find a mental piece that allowed him to still go out and perform at the highest level. And not only has he continued to perform at a high level, he's had the best year he's maybe ever had, I guess. Forty nine touchdowns, six interceptions, I think, and we've got forty nine hundred yards. Jesus. Um, yeah. 121. I mean, these are video game numbers. It's 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 unreal, almost yeah. unfathomable what he's doing. Uh, very impressive. Yeah. And um, you can't really, you know, the, the, like the tight end room is. It's interesting because you're, you're there with like say seven eight guys, and you know that they're going to keep three. You know these guys Jesus. are your friends. You cheer for them. You do want to see them do good. You just you just get, got know you got to do better. And yeah. for me, it was um, it was hey, if I always told myself if if everybody plays their best. I'm, I'm better than these guys. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I hope you play your best. I hope you do well, but I'm going to work harder mm-hmm. and I'm just going to play better and you beat you out. And in my mind is always, if I'm healthy, I'm not going to lose a battle to make a roster. And I never did. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I got hurt and never, and didn't get into a camp my last year. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, that was always my, I, I hope they played well. I hoped everybody did well. And you just got to have the confidence that, Hey, mm-hmm. I'm better than these guys. And that's, that's me personally. What I always thought, I put an extra extra time in the film room, extra time in the weight room, trying to trying to you know get a little bit faster, stronger, a little mm-hmm. more durable, mm-hmm. and uh, you know it paid paid off for me. And was that easy for you, Clay, or was that a daily battle to maintain that confidence? Did you have to look yourself in the mirror in the morning and give yourself a pep talk, or did you just naturally have that confidence? I just, I always, honestly, I always, always had that confidence. I just thought that I'm the. Um, I was one of the better players. The, the thing that was hard for me was, um, like, sometimes in the off season, I probably should have been. Um, I worked hard, but say if a friend, it's like a friend's birthday, I was going to, you know, go out for his birthday, mm-hmm. you know, have a few beers when I could have been maybe recovering mm-hmm. a little more. I always try to look at ways I could have improved mm-hmm. or continue to improve, and and those are that's one of the things that I would always look at. Is that something that happens a lot? In the end, I'm sorry, Clay. I continue that thought. I cut you off. No, that was uh, that was just that was pretty much the end of it. I was just um, always looking for ways to optimize. The only thing I think of is maybe I could have done a better job at uh, like the physical re- recovery aspect. Mm-hmm. That seems to be something that's it's pretty common in the NFL is partying. And it's impressive to me that you're talking about feeling guilty about maybe being a little hungover in the offseason because I've heard stories about a lot of players. I've talked about this at length on this podcast here, but my girlfriend's cousin loves to go out and bang NFL players. It is her favorite thing (laughs) on the planet. And she tells me stories. I've already said the name a bunch of times, so I'll just go out and say it now. I heard that when Quan Alexander, current linebacker for the Saints, was on the 49ers last year, during the playoffs, so this isn't the off season. This isn't April. Yeah. This is fucking December or early January. He was smashing yeah. a bottle of 1942 
banging a chick he just met on Instagram when he had like a conference championship game to go play in two weeks. Like, was that yeah. level of irresponsibility prevalent in the locker rooms you were in? It's crazy because some guys can perform like that and then some guys can't. Right. For for me, I've experienced both. I've seen guys who would go out on Friday night and get completely hammered and then, you know, you catch a 100-yard receiving and have a, have a great game on Sunday. When uh-huh. I came in the league, I was drafted by the Eagles in the fourth round. I go into Philly and um, Brent Selleck, a good friend of mine, unbelievable guy was was a was a starting tight end and just had a pro bowl year the year before and and i i come in there i don't know what to expect and i see a guy like him that could go drinking a couple times a week and then come in on sunday and just and mm-hmm. play and i and for me i'm like wow this is, this is how it is this is what guys do but um as i got older i think the i realized the ultra successful guys are the guys that can um you know, they have that discipline to yeah. stay in, to study, to, to do all that stuff. There are, trust me, there are guys that will go and go out and go to a, go to a club a couple nights before um, yeah, a couple nights before a game. I remember when I was in London, we played out in London, and both teams, I guess, were in the club. I didn't go out, but both both teams, my team and the other team, were in the club two nights before the game, hanging out with each other, each other and partying. And wow. um trying to holler at these girls these English girls so <laughs> some guys could do it I couldn't yeah if I you know I I just I don't think it would be the physical aspect just mentally I'd feel like dang I could have done more Me I too. Been home study. I, I wouldn't have been 100 percent into the game just knowing that I could have yeah. uh, could have recovered better yeah no me too absolutely it's I don't have the confidence in comedy to go out and perform like I, I if I drank the week before or if I was slacking off just jerking off constantly watching cartoons with my bong tucked under my arm I'm not going to feel like I put in the work to perform mm-hmm. and therefore that's going to become a self-fulfilling prophecy and I'm not going to perform but yeah it's interesting exactly. you said Clay that these guys they would party and they'd go out and they'd kick ass on Sunday but I imagine as you started to get deeper into your career. Maybe you'd been in the league five years or six years. That guy who was out getting shit faced, chasing pussy on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday probably was no longer in the league while your career was going strong. And then you see that you see it too with quarterbacks. Every elite quarterback is a Royal boar. Patrick Mahomes has had the same girlfriend since he was in high school. Tom Brady has been married for a fucking eternity won't eat nightshades, much less do a line of Coke and smash a Michelob. Yeah, it's and I, I see it in comedy too. the guys who have these long, illustrious careers. Louis C.K. is a comedian I look up to his vice. Yes, it's masturbating in front of debatably willing women, but he does not drink. He doesn't do drugs. Howard Stern goes to bed at 8 p.m. and has been married for 20 years. Adam mm. Carolla occasionally has some beer and watches football, but is a boring family guy. And uh, mm-hmm. I, I think and it, it makes me feel like I'm boring sometimes that I'm not out doing that anymore, but I want longevity in my career just like you had. So I tend to be a guy like you who goes to bed early, no. drinks in moderation in the off season, but is usually pretty focused. Oh yeah. Breeze, Brady, all those guys, man. Those guys are, are in bed by nine. They're studying. They have guys working on their body, their whole diet mm-hmm. plan. I remember when I was out in, um, Drew flew me out. It was my Drew Brees story. I know he just, it could be his last game, but yeah. Um, with the Saints. I signed before, uh, before OTAs. And um, I come in and I'm 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 crushing it. I'm having an unbelievable OTA. This is my my last year I played in, back in 2017. I'm playing really well and I played well enough to where Drew uh, invited me out to California um, to to train with him in the off season. Me and Kobe Fleener was another tight end on the Saints that year, and he invited both of us out to uh, out to California, San Diego, to run routes with him. Mm-hmm. I think I fly my flight my hotel. Drew sends me the itinerary. He bought the flight. He bought the hotel. He picked us up every morning and set us up with training and massages whenever we wanted. We're out there. Unbelievably, unbelievable A1 guy. Wow. But uh, I remember I remember throwing that whole week and, you know, Drew come in and, and um, the first route I ran with him, I came back and you usually just toss the, the ball at the ground to the quarterback. He, he's dropping back, throw the ball to um, Kobe. And, um, before I go up and run my next drive with Clay, wait and hand me the ball. I don't like to bend down. I'm like, fuck. He doesn't want to bend down any more than he has to because he, he doesn't 
he's saving that one bet. Wow. Like, that's how obsessive these guys are. Wow. He doesn't want to bend down and pick the ball up off the ground because mm-hmm. of something he's doing that's repetitive. So yeah. from then on, they're all right, I can't do that. Wait, back so, in practice. So Clay, wait, him, so, Clay, you're saying that he thought it was going to shorten his career to bend down more than it was necessary? To bend down, hmm. run around. But you think about it, if he throws 100 routes yeah. and bends down and picks the ball up 100 times, you know, he's probably thinking that's 100 bends right yeah. there. Mm-hmm. You know, So instead, you wait, you hand him the ball, and then you go line up. So that's something I learned. I'm like, man, these guys, same type thing for Tom Brady. He yeah. would have a ball boy be there to, to do that with him. Yeah. Like these ultra successful guys, they, they look at everything. Everything yeah. is important. And bending yeah. down to pick up the ball. Yeah. Uh, um, my headphones are, there we go. Wait, Austin, can you plug my headphones back in? I'm sorry. Oh, you're good. I can't hear Clay, though. This is stressing mm-hmm. one second clay there we yeah no worries man. Oh, there. Technology, technology, back it's it. better me a lot. yeah that's uh that's interesting clay that's a lot of times when i i just keep bringing this back to comedy because i'm a really good football player <laughs> not quite on the level of you. but uh i mean there are days when it's you it feels hopeless to write you you didn't get enough sleep the night before and you maybe oh, i'll just i'm gonna skip my workout today or oh, i'm gonna go get lunch with some friends instead of studying comedy and putting in my work. But what I think Drew and Brady know is that time goes by quick and reps matter. And in the case of bending down and taking a snap in a practice facility in San Diego, that rep taxes you and adds up and a year turns into two years, turns into five years. And now those guys have both been in the league for fucking 20 years. And so little choices matter is what I'm taking from that. Absolutely. And it's hilarious that we're talking about the, the difference in the guy. I have another story. My boy, I like Blake Bortles. He's a good guy. But um, yeah. the year before, two years before, I was with Jaguars. And, and we're going out to L.A. Because that's where a lot of the guys spend their time in the off season. Um, Why is that? Is that just is, is it because of the caliber of the pussy? They're just tired of living in their snow-covered northern city? Why do they all go to L.A.? I don't know. I don't know. A lot of those quarterbacks, no. I know, Breeze Brady, Blizzard. like, or in Cali, um, a lot of them Food. live out there. I don't know why. Man, they like the weather. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and Cali has a lot of the athletes. Too. Clay, like you, a lot you of guys in the Clay, you always told me though, there's nothing like a summer in Chicago, though, huh? Summertime, summertime, shy to me is he says it's the best. Is, is almost unbeatable. Obviously, we gotta go, dude. Lots in Chicago, but summer, uh-huh. summertime, shy. I mean. You know, Kanye said it best, man, and, and the good life song. <laughs> you know, summertime guys unreal. You got the lakefront. Yeah. You, know, you got the beef. You got the food. It's um, unbelievable culture there. The uh-huh. nightlife's great. Uh-huh. Um, it's something to experience if, you, if you've never experienced summertime shy. We got to go, great. I think. Dude. Yeah, Clay, I've been talking to Leo about this. That we got to come out there and film a video with you. We've done football <laughs> videos on our channel in the past, and I'd love to go out there and incorporate you somehow. Yeah, that'd be great. Dude. That too, man. I'm, uh, I mean, I'm thinking maybe maybe my second career. I haven't, I haven't started into my second career yet. Maybe That's I'll right. uh, maybe I'll join the team, man. <laughs> oh, <it's not. laughs> oh, that'd be the best, Clay. That'd be a lot of fun, man. Yeah, we need a handsome elite athlete. Right yep. now, we got a handsome third-rate athlete. He's sitting to the left of me <laughs> on the couch. I can hit a baseball. All right, That's about it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Clay. So I guess let's talk about the playoffs now coming up. I'm really excited. This this season is the most closely I followed football ever. The game yesterday was fucking awesome. The Tampa Bay, Tom Brady, New Orleans Saints, Drew Brees matchup. Um, I guess Leo we had a question. Yeah, uh, we had a question, Clay, and it's a little inappropriate, but we, you know, my co-host here, he always wants to. He wants to correlate the, a man's legendary you know, like career with his penis size. So if we had to ask. You know, is Tom Brady or Drew Brees' penis? Which one's bigger? <laughs> okay, so obviously you're you're talking about the locker room. Or the guy, guys do walk around, you know, butt ass naked. Right. But um, you know, I I never I never saw Tom or or, or Drew's dick, and and I don't really. Uh, I've seen a lot of dick in my life. Every girl I date, like there'll be some point I, I use the joke to where, like, trust me, I've seen a lot more dick in my life than you have. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and mm-hmm. that's true because uh, you play, you know, nine years in NFL, five years in college, oh, yeah. you know, high school, showering. I mean, there's a lot of dick floating around there. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I can't really. Danny would have been like, in heaven, guys, you know, oh. because they're uh, 
it all kind of blends into one big, right? You know, oh, it's it, big, whatever. Well, I mean, <laughs> that means the average is much bigger than I expected. That's not well. It, he no, blends in. You just don't remember line, specific. Yeah, I get what you're saying. The line, well, it's funny. The biggest linemen have the have the smallest dicks, but the biggest linemen. That's a joke. You think about them, but I mean, if I had to draw my old locker mates' dicks, unfortunately, I probably could. Like um, <laughs> back in the day, you know, you're sitting next to a guy. You're tall. I mean, it's just like you're just you just don't give a fuck. You got off the field, a little, uh, hundred degree training camp practice. Yeah, you're trying to work yourself to get into the into the shower. And, yeah, and like the meetings, jump in the cold tub. Yeah, so there. I mean, there was definitely a lot of that floating around in the locker room. And Clay, because I'm the kind of guy, I have an average dick, but I'm cursed by a couple of things. I have a giant nutsack, which for scale isn't good. And then also, I've just got one of those dicks where it looks like it's perpetually winter time when you see it flaccid. It never looks okay. good. Grower, not grower. Exactly. And it's oh. saying it's a grower is being generous, but it's average when it's grown. Were there guys in the locker room? Because I know if I played on an NFL team, I would be the guy you never see fully in the birthday suit. I would be in a towel and I would take that into the shower, then close the curtain. And then you'd see the towel pop out over the shower curtain rod. Mm. I would just never be fully exposed. Were there guys who were like that? And then did you happen to catch a glimpse when their guard was down and see that, oh, yeah, that guy really does have cause for embarrassment? Honestly, so first off, there's no there's no stalls. There's no curtains. Yeah, there's, there, there's just uh, room. Oh. It's all an open room. It's all an so open room, yeah. Pretty much screwed at that point. Mm-hmm. But yeah. at, at that level, you I mean, you you – become very aware of like the, the fucking you know physiological body and you realize there's going to be some guys with some small ass dicks and some guys with some big dicks and everybody's just like it doesn't matter yeah you know it was just kind of like the guys didn't care because at that point you run and you have you have a, a lot of amount of time so everybody goes to the shower at this one time because you have meetings in 30 minutes and if you were trying to wait for people to be out of there you'd be late or you would walk around sweaty all day which is pretty gross yeah so, so I am so tuned in right now, Clay. I'm hanging on your every word. So were there guys, though, and all the teams you played for, who were the official runts of the locker room, who by a large margin had the smallest penis? He said said it didn't matter, Dan. It definitely was, but nobody ever brought attention to it. I think it was... uh... Like you're not, you know, that's like a low blow. It's a low <laughs> blow, like, so, dude. So, so uh, most of them were big linemen. The big linemen, for whatever reason, they were the big. Guys. I don't know what you know, with the, the big three hundred fifty okay. pound linemen, but they were. Uh, you felt bad for those guys. Like, so yeah, that's tough. You never heard this. You so it would have been a faux pas for Drew Brees to be down in the squat under center and be like, "Blue forty two. My left tackle has a tiny dick." Said so what? Like, you never heard that <laughs> yeah, on the field. That, Never happened, but <laughs> that'd be bullying. That's something like that to the other team. Yeah, like you used to play this guy, you know, and you're trying to get in his head, uh-huh. and uh, you know, you could probably use that. Jesus, that'd be good. That's a good cadence you're saying. Yeah. If an old teammate is coming into pass rush, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh, sure. that's that's smart. And then also, Clay, I want to talk about this too. I'm sorry, this might be going way too in depth, and we might have lost the entire audience. But I'm just fascinated right now to move on from the penis yeah. topic. When you're out there on the field, what was your attitude towards shit talking? Because I'll see guys like Jalen Ramsey, who's the cornerback on the Rams play, and he is starting a fight with every receiver he's matched up with. The whole game, he's calling him a piece of shit, telling him he sucks, which to me, that approach to competition would be completely exhausting. I feel like it would be easier to stay quiet and just maintain happy thoughts and just play. How did you feel about it? I mean, each guy has their own has their own way to do it. That's how Jalen Ramsey gets himself hyped up. You know, he, he wants to his frame is he wants to be that ultra confident, you know, shit talker. And he wants to get people, you know, out of their out of their so to speak zone. Yeah, you know, and get them out of their comfort or talking their trash. And and some guys some guys do that. Me personally, I never really talk trash in a game, mm-hmm. but in practice, yeah. I mean, there's shit talking going with the same guy over and over again. If a guy's holding you or something, yeah. You, you know, Start talking shit and tell him how terrible he is. You, you know, you, you fucking suck. You, you fucking kidding me? If you hold me one more time, I'm gonna fucking punch you in your face. Yeah. Mm. You know, you, you get there are some heated 
I got to fight every practice. I was one of those guys that wanted to be a dickhead, show the coaches that I didn't care. I was going to block to the whistle. I was going to be nasty in between whistle to whistle mm-hmm. when you're on the field. And in the locker room, be nice guy, joke around, be quiet. But, hey, on the field, in between those uh, lines from whistle to whistle, I'm, I'm blocking you as hard as I can. I'm doing whatever it takes. I'm going to be I'm gonna be nasty about it. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I get each guy has their own little persona and their own little frame, men, men, mental frame that gets them going. And I don't mind shit talk. I mean, I, I never really paid, paid attention to it. Yeah. Yeah, for me, because my only athletic experience was when I did Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And for me, yeah. when I hated a guy in my gym, that would always be my worst performance when I rolled against him because I was hyper tense. So for me on a football field, I imagine the worst thing I could do was lock into a heated argument with this guy and make it personal instead of just focusing on the game. But, uh, yeah, it seems like you're, at least in a game situation, the same way. All right, Clay, let's talk about the playoffs. We've got three games left in the football season. we got the Green Bay Packers playing Tampa Bay. How do you see this one going down? Man, legend versus legend. Um, I guess I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you guys my one Tom Brady story. Yes, um, thank God, dude. He's, you're, 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 yeah. Look, Danny's the biggest Tom Brady fan in the world, I think. <laughs> Uh, that's yeah. not true. I I very much admire the gentleman, yeah. but I'm excited just the same to hear about his penis right now. Is, is this a penis story, Clay? <laughs> you yeah. wish. You wish. <laughs> Fuck. Fuck. Sorry, I'm sorry, but I, I think it's a cool story because it, it shows you how competitive this, this dude is. Mm-hmm. I can't wait. So, to hear um, Let's hear it. I can't wait. When I was a bro, you know, I came in from the Jaguars. I'm trying to learn this offense. And this offense is just completely different than the offense of Jackson. The Patriots. The, the Patriots offense. The Patriots offense. It's just so much verbiage. And yeah. There are certain plays that, that teams have. Like Jackson, we had like eight. They were called the Lightnings. They're called Lightnings because it's fast. You, you say like cart, and you have to know the whole formation, the cadence, the, the route, the check. You know, you have to know everything. And the Patriots had like 100 of these things. And like team like Jackson has seven eight of them, you know, so I uh, trying to learn these, I got really good at them just because I used all this correlation, you know, that I had these different study techniques. I'd listen to them in my headphones. I just walk around my place. I got really good at them. My, my tight end coach, Brian Dable, is actually the offensive coordinator for the Cleveland Browns right now. Um, um, was like, man, you're one of the best I've ever seen at this game. So you would say a certain play and you have to say what, what lightning or what, what code name it was. Jesus. So one day Tom comes in the tight end room. I'm in that crazy tight end room. We had Gronk, Martellus Bennett, Jesus. AJ Durr. We had a bunch of guys. Those guys talking back and forth, fucking hilarious. But um, how's Gronk's Tom cock? I've heard Gronk's got a big cock. I'm sorry to cut in. With- <laughs> I, honestly, I don't. I don't remember. And he was he was like next to me, next to my locker because tight ends were all. Uh, we're all uh, next to each other. You wish. Dan. I think Clay might be protecting Gronk here because Clay did say he could draw all of his teammates' penises. Oh uh, well, he didn't spend that much time no, with the, with Gronk though. For, the ones I had for years. Yeah, oh, like for the years. The teammates for years. Yeah. You should. Um, yeah. I think you should commit to drawing your teammates' penises. <laughs> and I know you have a large compound out in Chicago. Maybe dedicate it to a room. Just have penis drawings all over one wall. <laughs> You know, I'm like a man cave, you know? Man, like, cave. Yeah, like man, <laughs> man cave in the truest have, sense of it. Have them all sign it. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm sorry to derail you, yeah, Clay. So tell, me about, tell me about Tom in the tight end room. Yes, I'm excited. So absolutely. So Tom pops in. He's trying to tell us about uh, some route that he wants to switch up, a depth or something like that. And um, Dable's like, yo, Tom, i got a challenge for you. Um, I want you to play Clay in this game. And Tom's like, whatever, like, this will be easy. You know, we got this new tight end. And um, do like five, the first of five. I crushed Tom in this game. He, they would say like, you know, bar cart. I'd be like, green left, fox, X2, Y, hook. You know, like, I know the route. And then um, Tom's pissed. I beat him. He's pissed. He leaves, slams the door, doesn't say anything. I'm like, dude, I thought this guy was joking around. He's actually legit mad. Yeah. Him the door. So we meetings. And the next day I come in, we're sitting down for meetings and, um, in tight end room again. And um, Tom walks in the door. Let's go. Let's fucking go, Clay. I'm like, what? I'm, I'm, at this point, my heart's I'm like, what the fuck did I do? Let's fucking go. Dable, play, play the fucking game. Everybody starts laughing. Tom doesn't break, uh, doesn't smile. He's pissed. He's staring at me. I'm like, all right, fuck it. Let's go then, Tom. 
The guy beats me 10 straight. Fuck you. Leaves the room. Slams the door again. <laughs> the guy's all competitive. Literally. That's, came back, went that's home, what I do to Leo, stuff. by the way. When I, whenever Leo makes funnier jokes than me on the podcast, I slam the door and I don't talk to him for a week. <laughs> I'm very, yeah. Fuck these guys. It's unbelievable. The wow, guy man. That, this is just a little fucking game. And this is the greatest quarterback to ever play football we're talking about. Wow. Yeah. And then was he nice to you the next time he saw you or did he just never speak to you again? No, he was cool with me. He okay. was cool. He, he was cool with me. I remember um, one time we're in the huddle. He's like, uh, he's like, Clay, I don't like that fucking look on your face. So I'm like, I look at him like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, I'm pissed. He's like, oh, I like that one better. That's the look I want. <laughs> I'm like, what? I'm like, all right. That's Damn. funny. Yeah, it's... It's so strange because it seems like it would be hard to focus on what actually mattered, going out and winning football games and making sure you're well-rested and having time with your family. It seems like it'd be hard to worry about all that shit when you're getting into play recitation battles with a tight end. Yeah. It's, it, doesn't, yeah. it doesn't seem like you'd have the mental energy for that shit, but, I mean, obviously it worked. It clearly works for Tom Brady. Is, man, ultra fucking competitive. It's yeah, crazy. In, seven, in camp and OTAs, he's playing that shit like it's a Super Bowl. Yeah, he gets a ball back. Where the ball boys holding up those big like tennis racket type thing. He's motherfucking everybody. The guy plays every play like it's a real fucking game. Wow. And just to recap for the audience, because I'm sure some of them are football fans. The majority probably aren't too into it. Tom Brady, six Super Bowls, all with the New England Patriots. Mm-hmm. It seemed like I just read a book on their coach, Bill Belichick. It seemed like Bill Belichick's ego was the primary thing that drove Tom Brady out. Bill Belichick and some of the coaching staff rumors were getting out that they not only were okay with Tom leaving, they wanted him to leave because their egos were so big. They wanted to prove it was them and not him winning all those Super Bowls. They wanted a new challenge. And then things were happening like they banned Tom Brady's trainer from the facility, the TB12 guy, who was like the flexibility yeah. guru. They ousted yeah. him. They uh, they were pitting Jimmy Garoppolo, the younger quarterback, against Tom Brady. Things like this, all an effort to drive him out. So Tom Brady leaves New England finally, and the question becomes, was it Tom or was it Bill who was responsible for all those big championship wins? That's one of those psychological storylines that I mentioned at the start of the podcast that so intrigued me about football. And what has happened? Well, it started rocky for Tampa Bay, and things went pretty smoothly, at least early on for New England. Bill Belichick and his team are now out of the playoffs. They had a losing record, and Tom just destroyed the New Orleans Saints. They tore through Washington earlier on, and now he's got he's two games away from getting another ring with a team he just started playing for. So it looks like Tom, a lot of people are saying, won the divorce between him and Bill Belichick, and I think that's awesome, and uh, I can't wait to see this game against Green Bay. Was that going to be an unbelievable game, man? But here's my here's my take on that. The, the Patriots the Patriots had a bunch of guys opt out of the season. It's Dante Hightower, all pro middle linebacker, COVID reasons, opts out of the season. Um, starting safety, Patrick Chung, opted out of the season. I know their starting fullback, Danny Vitale, opted out of the season. New England had a perfect storm of things that happened yeah. with all these guys that opted out of the season um, and some injuries. And I don't want to just judge Belichick and say it was it was you know Tom leaving was the only reason for that. It's those are some tough spots to fill on the defense. Mm-hmm. Your all pro middle linebacker just leaves for a year. Your 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 starting safety that's been on all your winning team decides to the the captain of the defense to leave for you. your starting fullback. Like those, these are some uh, alignment. These are some tough holes to fill. Yeah, you know so. I think that Tom has obviously has proven his greatness, but I think that that Bill Belichick is is great as well and is going to have is going to show next year when yeah. they get back in the playoffs and everything of how the reason he is who he is, you know. So, what do you think about these two games coming up? Maybe some of the fans are gamblers. Tom Brady and his Bucks are taking on Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. We've praised Aaron Rodgers a lot this podcast, his incredible turnaround in the face of all this adversity with the Jordan Love, the new quarterback they brought in. But Tampa Bay played Green Bay earlier in the season, and they humiliated them. 
I think Green Bay is going to be an easier win for Tom and Tampa than the Saints were. I thought the Saints was going to be the end of the line. I'm going. I'm going with. I'm going with Green Bay. I, I You're going to defy me, line. me, Danny Mullen, <laughs> who's played a couple amateur football games. That's bullshit, Clay. <laughs> I, I don't trust me. I don't gamble, and the reason I don't gamble in football, um, I remember when I was playing. I had played against two teams the previous two weeks, and they were now playing each other. This happened a lot, and I would always just in my head be like, "Oh, I know for a fact that this team." I literally played against both these teams the, the prior week. This team is going to kick that team's ass. Guess what happens? The, the other opposite. team wins. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I go, oh, I don't fucking know anymore. Yeah. I, I don't know. I have no idea what's going to happen. Yeah. I've been on the field playing with each of these guys up close, and I couldn't tell you which team's going to win. Yeah. What I thought my, personally. So ever since that, I mean, I enjoy watching the games, and I judge off of. I think the easiest way to, to pick a, win, a, win, a winner is the quarterback. Yeah. You know, if you can see that a game like this, obviously you got the two best quarterbacks in the league. Yeah. So to me, that's very, you know, very tough. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. But it's, it's so hard with a football team. There's so many moving parts. There are what? Yeah. Whether 24 fucking guys on the field at a time, unless I'm retarded and doing my math wrong. But uh, tw- there, there we go. That shows my knowledge of football. <laughs> but it's like, for me, I can come on a podcast and feel on fire, or I can come in totally flat and sluggish and have a terrible show. And with mm-hmm. football, you have that going with 11 guys. Is that on, on each side? Mm-hmm. 11 guys. Yeah, well, a- any one of those 11 guys could just shit the bed. The moment could be too big for him. Yeah. He could be hungover or he could just psychologically melt. And yep. that's it, it makes it almost impossible to predict what the fuck's going to happen. Yeah. It's that human aspect, man. And yeah. uh, I've, I've tried to, to, to do some stuff before, like who's like just – who do I think would win? Like playing these guys, I don't know anymore. This stuff just it's it, it escapes me. So I'm not very good when it comes to the uh, the games. My dad loves uh, picking a couple parlays, watching the games. You know, having a beer makes him uh, makes him feel like he's got something on it. So mm-hmm. he asked me for for pointers, and I'll try to tell him what what I feel like I know. And I'll be honest, man, I'm not I'm not I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm definitely not bad in a thousand or anywhere close to that. Yeah. So you think Green Bay is going to prevail because of Aaron Rodgers? That's the the sense you have. Yeah. What about over on the other side, Buffalo versus Kansas City? Kansas City, I think um, if Mahomes is back, Kansas City and Chad Henney came in the game. Chad Henney was my long time, well, three year quarterback for three years in in um, Jacksonville. One year was was Bortles, but um, love Chad Henney. I think he's a very capable quarterback and a damn good guy, a damn good player. I know we didn't do very well in Jacksonville wasn't because of him. He played as well as he probably could have. But uh, if Mahomes is healthy, I think Mahomes is going to be the greatest player to ever play football. The guy's got unbelievable talent, he, the way he can move, the way he can throw. And um, Andy Reid, the coach that drafted me, played there, played with him for four years. Love the guy. I think he's an unbelievable coach, unbelievable offensive coach. And um, I don't think there's any way that that Buffalo, uh, Buffalo pulls that off if they're at – strength hmm. yeah i don't know there's one knock on patrick mahomes that i've heard it mostly comes from my co-host leo it's You're on it's on his asshole. brother oh god uh, jackson look i mean i talk shit i try to get jackson on the podcast here just to, like talk shit to him but we couldn't do it that was mean i then i found out he's he came out of the closet so patrick mahomes his brother yeah he's he's gay but it's fine i didn't know i thought that he was just yeah. Yeah. I thought that he was just like that. Clay, I, you know, you may have asked yourself, oh, what has my buddy Leo been doing since The Bachelor? He's been bullying the gay brother of an NFL <laughs> that superstar. That is not true. He's been doing that. <laughs> that is not true. I've been trying to get <laughs> him on the pod. Yeah. That's nice, man. Yeah, it, man. it is nice. It's, well, things are going well. For it's fun. It's, Leo, it's good. Have you have you sexually harassed him by sending him any penis pictures? No, I have not. <laughs> but I would get him on the pod, maybe. I should actually probably offer. It's a decent strategy. <laughs> Yeah, man, Clay, I miss you, brother. Uh, yeah, dude, it's been so long, man. We uh, we definitely have to go to Chicago and hang out, bro. That would be the best. You guys come out here. We'll do a funny video, man, and I'll, oh. I'll show you guys the city. If there's one place I know on this planet, I mean, it's Chicago. I've been here for over 10 years. You know, I grew up in um, 
uh, Illinois, but uh, nice. an hour away from the city. So, you know, I know this area, man, and I can show you guys all the spots, show you guys that food. Let's oh, do man. it, man. If Can't wait, dude. Bars road, summertime, dude. We're coming summertime. We'll, we'll do it. I'd love it. Clay, what's your Instagram? Austin, pull up his Instagram so people can put a face to the name here. Yeah. We, we, uh, you follow yeah. him. Yeah. Clay Harbs82. Clay um, Harbs82? Clay Harbs82. Yeah. I had the same Instagram since, you know, the conception. I don't know why I did. Clay, Harvey, Clay too, what, do, what brought you more attention from the ladies? Would you say the NFL or uh, the Bachelorette? Mm. You know, it's pretty crazy, Leo, and I think you uh, oh. you probably get this too, but, mm. um, you know, I played in NFL for nine years. Very mm. proud of that accomplishment, you know, graduating college in three years, yeah. three-time All-American and, in college, and, and to people now, I am Clay from The Bachelor. Yep. The show I was on for yeah. like four or five hours. I know, and bro. I know. A few episodes. You're Clay from the Bachelor. You killed it on though. You killed it on the, all those episodes, uh, bro. You did a good job. I'm more. No, yeah, yeah, man. You killed it. That is. Yeah, it's crazy how many people watch that fucking show, though. It really is, man. I have no idea. It's so nuts. I have no idea yeah, me too, dude. I didn't know show. shit about it. So Clay, obviously, because knowing Leo, I know the answer to this. The guys on the Bachelor are just inundated with women you guys get a ton of ass but the guys who play in the nfl i mean how are they getting women because they have their helmets on in the games so they're sort of anonymous unless they're a big superstar they probably don't have a big following on instagram and even if they do it's primarily men how much ass are pro athletes getting well it depends there's there's a guy like an offensive lineman who's not that well known or something or you know whatever a decent looking guy, but uh, they're, they're not doing well. Per team, you'll you'll see about like New England had a ton of these guys, but like those Playboys, the Julian Edelman, right. Danny Amendola, yeah, these are are very popular guys. There's always those guys that are mm-hmm. cleaning up the hottest girl. But are Julian summer. Edelman because Julian Edelman and Danny Amendola are really high level athletes. Are they out taking <laughs> advantage of that and fucking all the time? Because it, it doesn't show on the field. They play so well. No, they just get the top, the top level uh, women, the, the models and stuff. And I heard Julian Jules used to go out and party a lot. I know Gronk does, mm. or he'll just have girls come to his place when he was uh, when he was single. And mm. um, but he would still go on party and stuff. Gronk partied a lot and still performed. Yeah. Another guy that was I was impressed with could do, could uh, could do that, and he's still playing like thirteen years. But um, some guys do, some guys don't. And I remember being at a bar in Chicago and. I was out with some of my some of my NFL friends, and I'm trying to set them up with girls because I like girls that come up to me and you're Clay from the Bachelor. I'm like, yo, this guy literally plays for the Minnesota Vikings. He's a superstar. That's Didn't nuts. care. Wow. So this guy plays for the Kings. Huh. They, they, they just wanted they were more low Clay, man. Yeah. The, yeah. The you should, uh, <laughs> hey, Clay, if we ever hang out, you could introduce those guys to my girlfriend's cousin. She'll eat their ass right there in the bar. <laughs> She won't even have to go to the bathroom. Oh, man, I'm sure they would like that, man. We'll have to set <laughs> Who that wouldn't? Up. It's in addition to the pleasure, it's thrilling. <laughs> yeah, Clay, man, this has been great talking to you, dude. I again probably derailed the podcast completely, but I've never spoken to a real live NFL dude, and player. He's well, well spoken, and thank you so much, bro, for giving us your time today, bro. You killed it. It was really funny. It was great, yeah, dude. Yeah. And we'll definitely all meet up in Chicago this summer. Let's do it. We got to. We're gonna, we got to meet up. We got to meet up in Chicago. Let's and do then, it. Um, me, and Clay, me Leo, and a steam room, no <laughs> get towel. The fuck out of here, dude. <laughs> a little oil, maybe. A little oil. A little oil. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Clay, brother. You have a great day, right, man? All right, later, guys. Later, Clay. Later, Thank brother. you so much, man. See. You. Oh, what a nice guy. I like him. Dude, charming. Yeah. Charming man. We got to go out there and do a video with that motherfucker. Dude, it would be great. All right. Oh. I'm going to piss, then let's fucking burn this motherfucker down. Let's do something crazy. Yeah, let's do something crazy. <laughs> <I'm done. laughs> okay, so we were we had a wholesome fucking conversation for 15, 20 minutes, and Danny's losing his fucking mind. Are we recording? Yeah. All right. And Danny's losing his mind because it was wholesome. We had a good conversation. We talked a little bit. He really diffused the penis, Doc. But I think what we got from it is that you need to go around and basically shower with 30, 40 black guys. Mm. I think that that would make you. Well, all I need to do is commit a felony then. (laughs) I'm sorry. You could have just fucking said, you know what? Maybe I need to get a press pass into the NFL locker room somewhere. <laughs> but no, you had to say that. And Look, I stuttered when I said it. Too, I'll say so this, though. I'll say this. What you said was cool. I've heard this before, too. Like when you have penis problems where you think your penis is small and stuff, 
you if you hang out with a bunch of other dudes naked and shit you could start to realize it really doesn't matter yeah is that what makes you happy leo whenever you're feeling down just round up a bunch of naked men i've never really done that i mean at ucla was the only time i ever showered we had the the open showers at junior college we didn't have showers so but at, at ucla and then at cal state stanislaus we that we had stalls which yeah. was kind of cool but um yeah the open shower at ucla yeah the guys it didn't matter i was you know i was always I, I, you've seen it. Hey, you've been good. talking about your depression recently. Maybe you need to you know, frequent a YMCA. You know, why not, to... dude? Why not? But you want to do something crazy. I, you what know what? I've got something to say. Yeah. I say we do play that game I was just talking about. Two and a half hours before they bang. Hey, man. People's minds do not always relay reality to their brain. A girl with body dysmorphia thinks she's obese when she's actually thin. I heard an interview recently with a couple of my favorite comedians talking about career dysmorphia the comedians have, which no matter what they've done in their lives, they think they aren't funny, that they suck. I have a degree of that. Whenever I watch any of my videos, I think this is trash. Who the fuck would waste their time watching? No, this? you don't. A lot of them. Yeah, dude. It's, really? Fuck. Yeah, dude. It is rare. I walk out of here thinking we did a good podcast. Mm. It is really rare. It's rare that after we shot a video, I think it's any good. And I just have to Jesus. push through that. But fucking women and men you know this is true mm -hmm. they have a distorted perception of who their partner really is we can think of a name right now that i'm not going to say that we mm -hmm. talked about really recently yeah, yeah, who's yeah. with a chick who yeah. we know is a fucking nightmare or this yeah. this fucking my girlfriend's mom thinks her guy is awesome yeah it's strange man I, that's one of the things uh, a lesson that i always my father the, the always told me was that you can't mess with somebody else's relationship the way they see their partner it's a, it's almost like a delusion uh they can be literally like just a different human being with this mm -hmm. person and no matter what you say and in yeah. fact if you get involved it's only going to hurt your relationship and then every single time i've ever just tried to share an opinion even if it's based with even if you line it with facts mm -hmm. like she did this she did this and she did you think that she's a good person yeah it doesn't matter but you know it, it goes through i mean way more of your life is affected by that than just your your spouse yeah. i know you've probably had physical insecurities about yourself that were magnified in your head and you thought everybody fucking noticed mm -hmm. like after my fucking nose got broken i was pissed i was like dude my fucking face is disgusting now it's all crooked and weird and i thought that for a while that like i am repulsive looking because my fucking nose is crooked and then as you mature, hopefully you realize that these little things are a drop in the ocean as far as it's importance, yeah. especially when we're going to be dead soon yeah. and when uh, pretty soon humanity is going to be extinct and right. then our cities are going to be covered in sand or ocean and then a new epoch is going to begin. Right. You realize these things don't matter, but it takes some uh, some mental exercises to diminish them in importance. Right. And uh, I mean, yeah, definitely. Same goes for well partners. said, man. I love, I love that. It would you say that's a little nihilism there that you spouted no not fan, i mean jerry no 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 i don't think it's nihilism it's i guess stoicism is the philosophy mm -hmm. that recently has been really influential to me mm -hmm. and it's more it's less like fuck everything i hate everything mm -hmm. and it's more my ego and my own sense of importance mm -hmm. is way over inflated mm -hmm. because i started thinking recently i started telling myself that I'm way less important than I once had believed until now. I don't think I'm important at all. Right. And when you don't think you're important, that forces you to objectively, objectively analyze the script you've just written, Love objectively that. analyze the podcast performance you've just given because you can no longer fall back on the crutch. Oh, I'm a great comedian. People fucking love me. I'm a genius. I've got the secret because I know that's not the case. Mm -hmm. I know I'm just a guy that's kind of funny that worked really hard right. and I can suck at any moment. And then when it comes to aging, you don't freak out over a wrinkle over or over a gray hair because you're like, I'm just a guy in an endless sea of men and women that have gone through the ages. Beautiful. It doesn't it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And yeah, getting rid of your ego and reading stoic philosophy, which prioritizes tranquility above mm -hmm. all else has been huge for me. Beautiful. So like uh, tranquility, if I'm happy in my own mind, it doesn't matter if I'm a carpenter or I'm a fucking rock star, yeah. a rock star. It can be much less happy than the carpenter yeah. if he doesn't run his mind correctly. Mm -hmm. And if you do run your mind correctly, I mean, it almost doesn't matter if you're fucking homeless right. because you're still going to be happy. 
Uh, well, it's been helping me a lot with my depression is uh, it definitely being uh, productive, but also uh, my mother got me this book about happiness where it was a conversation between the Dalai Lama and uh, the, an archbishop. Um, I forget his name. It's a very the black guy. He's famous, whatever. But what the, the Bishop general, Ron? <laughs> it's not Bishop Ron. The general <laughs> consensus of that is that they both, that experiencing joy is really just about realizing that the what gift the gift that we've been given just to be alive yeah that every single moment is beautiful yeah. even if you are it's a dark day where your your mother passed away your your father passed away the fact that you're alive to experience mm-hmm. it is in a way a beautiful thing yeah and once you really hold on to that man it's kind of difficult to fall into depression yeah because you're like fuck, i'm fucking alive though yeah. man i'm alive on this planet everything is just it's happening right here i can my blood is, is circulating I'm alive yeah. and that is a gift. And mm-hmm. the more I hold on to that, man, the happy, the more joy that's been coming into my life. Man. Yeah, man. I yeah. made it a huge point yesterday when I was walking to get dinner with my girlfriend in Culver city, it was sunset in, in LA. It's one oh, of the best things about it. These fucking ridiculous these sunsets where the sky looks like it's on fire. It's beautiful. And there was a silhouette of a palm tree and there was the old Century City Tower there, mm. like this old classic L.A. architecture. It looked mm. like the cover of that Eagles album, Hotel California. Mm. And I was like, right now in this moment, I'm glad to be alive. That's right. Another thing I've been working on, too, is gratitude. I write down five things I'm grateful for every morning because when you sit back and you realize, oh, I live in a house. Is Austin one of those things in the morning? Austin is one of the things that I'm trying is my <laughs> hardest to replace. <laughs> I kid, Austin. I, I do write down... I repeat it often that I'm grateful for my team and my crew. I'm grateful for Ian. I'm grateful for Austin. I'm grateful for Nico. I'm grateful for Fan Jerry. I'm grateful for Leo. I'm grateful that I got a group of friends who we have this collective partnership and then we're all working together toward greatness. I'm definitely grateful for that. But yeah, we have a roof over our head and we have clean showers and we have warm food. It's fucking awesome. And we, I mean, we live in a country where even if everything is taken from us, if we get me tooed, if we get thrown out of the entertainment business, everybody in this room, except for Dino, has the ability to go <laughs> get a menial job yep. and live a life where we have all we need. Yes. And if you're just thankful for what you have around you, you'll stop being like, oh, today would only be perfect if my video hit 300K views mm-hmm. or, oh, it would only be perfect if that company gets back to me about that brand deal that's going to help me buy a new pair of sneakers this mm-hmm. month. You, it gets rid of all that fucking noise. That's right. Gratitude and, and gratitude for something as simple as a sunset mm-hmm. in, in this moment right now where we're alive. We're alive. This is taking a beautiful turn. Hasn't I it? love it. Yeah. It went from making fun of a fat girl who couldn't <laughs> claw her lard ass into a dinghy <laughs> into this hey, but, moment of profundity. Yeah, but seriously, I, I like when we get a little deep every now. We haven't done it in a while, but seriously, I know a lot of those kids, you guys out there, you guys are struggling with depression. And that's you turn to us to, to help you get through the weeks. I get so many messages about that. You probably do, too, but you don't read them because you're too you're busy. I get it. No, not enough time to scour your DMs like me. But it's important to realize, guys, that we're all lucky to be alive on this fucking floating rock here. So yeah. enjoy it, man. Enjoy it. Just fucking look out your window and, and just happy, smile, man. Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry. That's another big yeah. thing, too. And a book I read recently <laughs> Uh, a major American banker. I forget his name. He said that Charles Lindbergh, the aviator who uh, Austin butchered when we were in Palm Springs. <laughs> <laughs> he said to him right before he died, this big prominent banker, he said, Charles, whatever you do, don't worry. It's the worst thing for your brain. And uh, yeah, don't worry. It. Deal with problems when they come, but yes. just shoot for optimum tranquility in the moment. Yes. Now let's all say something embarrassing about ourselves. All right. You want to start? You know, you I, have hadn't, one? I hadn't thought of anything yet. Okay, I already confessed with, to killing an ark full of you earthworms. Did, you did your job. I think we should start with Deacon. <laughs> That's the only uh, answer. B- besides slaying your family tabby cat, what else yeah. do you got for us? Here, Derek. Hey, Dino. Really, really embarrassing. Don't be fucking an asshole, Dino. I know you got something embarrassing. So come on. Embarrassing. I'm really trying to think, but I don't really hide anything. I'll give one while Derek thinks about it. <clears throat> I was thinking about this one earlier. One time, this was before I moved to California. My sister just lived here. And we were with my family visiting for just like a week or so on vacation. And we're driving around in the van going somewhere. And in the back of our van, it has a seat that lays down like a bed. 
So Derek and I are always just like back there fucking wrestling around and playing video games and shit. Uh huh. And I was farting on him because I thought it was really funny. Yeah. <laughs> I shit myself <laughs> trying to fart on Derek. Oh. I sharted my underwear in the car. I went, Mom, I think I just shit myself. Can we go to the gas station? Oh my and God. We had to search in the trunk for a new pair of underwear. I had to change underwear and wipe my ass in the bathroom. Oh. And, and Derek has to live with the fact that I put my butt cheeks against him and shit myself. Holy shit. I think uh-huh. that's a pretty good embarrassing story. I, I at least I, think it's fun. I have a shitting myself embarrassing story too, but I'm trying to think of one that is better than that. Yeah, I'm, one that is cripplingly embarrassing right. to admit. Like, I, I mean, Dirty Dom got me to admit that I put on a pair of cheap aviators and jerked off in myself in the mirror. No. I already admitted that. I remember Oh, that. you did. Yeah, you did, yeah. You did, yeah. And I, you basically casually admitted you've done it many times too. Yeah, sure, but when I was younger. <laughs> when, I, when I was prettier. When you were younger. Uh, when I was prettier. Younger yeah, by I liked, half a day. I liked like 19 year old Leo more than uh, myself now. I think as far as jerking off to myself, I think I'm better looking now. But. You've jerked off to yourself within the last week. I'm like straight in the mirror. I don't know about that. A picture of yourself. But really a picture. Have you ever jerked off to a picture of yourself? No. Yeah. I think porns of myself. Yeah. Like porn fucking girls that you I, have jerked off to a picture of yourself shirtless. One of those professionally shot ones you used to post on your Instagram. You wish, dude. Uh, who does that? That's a, that is some sociopathic shit. I, I mean, I jerked that, off to myself in a mirror, and you admitted with, that too. So <laughs> yeah. I don't think it's much but worse. But that's like a normal thing. No. Though. Yeah, guys do that. When do they you do. know? Have you masturbated to yourself in the mirror? How do you get off to yourself? Yeah, I don't see, they don't get it. They don't get it. it. It happens when you take Trenabol and you get a little jacked. <laughs> you get You got to. You got to take a little bit of like some pill form steroids. You get them abs popping, and then all of a sudden, you know, you you jerk off in the mirror. It yeah. just happens. It's oh, a natural yeah. progression. Yeah, yeah. But no, I'm really trying to think of a really embarrassing story that I haven't like I've I've hid in my in the back of my mind somewhere. And I, I dude, I'm fucking. I don't know, but what do you get? Do you have another one? Because this would be shocking if you Dude, still have another one. I, I'm sure, sure, sure I do. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to scan preschool. What was Danny doing? Not too <laughs> oh much. God. Danny was playing with trucks and dinosaurs. Uh-huh. Drawing. I think I've talked about this drawing pictures of people having sex and then leaving them scattered around my house. That wasn't mm-hmm. good. I've confessed to hiding in my sheets and letting my mom come out of the shower naked so I can check out her titties. Yeah, unreal. I remember once my mom was tucking me in and reading me a bedtime story and I was looking at her tits because she was leaned over the bed and her shirt had come down. And then she saw where my eyes were going and pushed her shirt up to hide her boobs. So that I got caught staring. Oh my God. Within the family. I've talked about jerking off to my sister's tits or oh. there was a friend in the pool too. So I'm going to claim until the day I die that my little eyes were homed in on the girl, Elise, not my sister. <laughs> I, um, oh, what's, is there anything gay I've done? Other than having a Native American's penis wrapped around my throat? Yes, Jesus, man. <laughs> you are. I'm an open book. I'm You're trying. a renaissance man. I, you know, he's a true renaissance man because you get, you got to try everything once. But incest and heroin, that was what a, a saying a, a teacher at UCLA used to say. Incest? Well, yeah. fat girl's boyfriend's off that Dude, list. his sisters fucked him or just play? If they just diddled, They fucked him. Really? Yeah, this is... You never had... Your sister never like diddled your ball sack or something? I remember saying once my sister and I were naked in the living room mm. or maybe not naked maybe we were just in little kitty play clothes and her and I were like crawling around playing uh, like pretending we were animals or dogs and I looked at her and I said hey you want a mate I think I said it in an Australian accent because <laughs> the crocodile hunter was big at the time yeah. but we didn't fuck if that's what you're looking for <laughs> dude I'm, I'm desperately racking yeah, this, same, this, this little think box for a story same because they're all shitting myself stories that's always where i felt the most shame oh yeah i've done that yeah, many times too yeah it's nothing um fucking you ever kick up i got i got caught um uh was it, it it was pretty embarrassing to feel but it's not that big a deal but i caught i got caught trying to dine and ditch at oh, not get out of farm. here that's nothing we got caught on camera doing it in san francisco and yeah. it was our idea yeah um i got nothing yeah, I, I get neither. nothing. I, I mean, it's tough to come up with a good story when we already discussed in depth on this show me yeah. getting a crunchy peanut butter blowjob from a dash hound. Yeah, I've, I've got another one. Oh, sure. Is it sure. another shit in yourself story? No, it's similar. <laughs> I, <laughs> Take I was us at away, school Austin. one day. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I went to the bathroom. And I guess I jacked off in the morning and didn't do a good enough job wiping it up. Oh, and God. I had that situation where your dick like glues itself together. 
with the, the, the dried cum or whatever. Okay. And I go to the urinal. I go to take a piss. I'm pissing straight. Like, it's going into the toilet. I've never had this, by the way. But I didn't notice that my, my piss stream had also created a second stream that diverted itself towards my pant legs. Uh-huh. And I ended up, like, pissing all over my pants without mm-hmm. noticing it because I think I was on my phone or something at the time. Mm-hmm. And I looked down. I'm all covered in piss. I changed into my gym shorts and just pretended like nothing happened. That, good for you for having a change of clothing. I pissed myself at the airport in Nashville last week. Yeah, a pretty good amount, too. He wasn't wearing underwear for like three days. That wasn't a Nash- joke. That was real. Yeah, oh, yeah. it was real. So he I already talked about himself, this. Yeah. yeah, my drawstrings were so tight that I my pee tube, you can tell I'm a urologist, my pee tube was constricted by the waistband because they were so tied tight. And I thought I'd shaken out all the urine out of the, the, the hose where pee goes through. But then I pulled up my pants and I was mistaken. And like another couple beakers just drench my pant legs. I had to go into the bathroom stall, take a bunch of wadded up toilet paper and my Cleveland Indians hat. No. And do the sponge work. No. Yeah, my Cleveland Indians. And I put it right back on my head. It was drenched in pee and I was wearing it around the airport. God damn it. I am a sick son of a bitch. All right, guys. That's been the show. That's it, dude. Yeah. We couldn't do it, guys. Love you. (laughs)